What's wrong with our schools? That is the topic of tonight's byline. There was a story out earlier this week about Ontario kids failing in math and the government deciding to put millions of dollars into teacher training to help fix this problem. We know kids are not learning math at school and part of the reason might be what they're learning. Cranky folks like me saying, oh, we need to get back to the basics. Well, that's about as cliche to comment as you can get when talking about education. Maybe it's a cliche, though, because it's true and it needs to be repeated over and over again. We'll get to the specific problems in teaching math in a moment, but let's look at what some of the main educational groups are pushing. The sort of things that get in the way of teaching math. Maybe this is part of the problem. We've got the Canadian Teachers Federation, that's the national umbrella group for teachers unions in Canada, but they don't just push for better working conditions or contracts, they see themselves as shapers of what children should learn. And it's not math, they're pushing things like supporting transgender and transsexual students in K-12 schools. Have you noticed that everything lately is about transgendered issues? We need to have transgendered washrooms, let men dressed as women use the ladies' change room. This is the new cause du jour. Now, I've led a pretty interesting life, traveled across the country, worked in some strange places. I can tell you there are not a lot of transgender folks out there. Despite all the hype, this is a small, small group of people, and they tend to be adults not six-year-olds, learning to tie their shoes. Doesn't matter, the Canadian Teachers Federation, which your local teacher is likely a member of by default, well, they support changing school curriculum across the country so that your kids know there are more than two sexes, more than two genders. Here's a quote. Accordingly, schools should work to foster environments that challenge binary representations and in turn embrace the fluidity of sex, sexuality, and gender. See, it's all fluid, man. It can all change. Nothing's right or wrong. Actually, some things are right and some things are wrong. Wrong is being heteronormative. That means thinking that being straight is normal. Well, that's wrong. So we need to get rid of certain terms in the classroom. On page 34 of the Teacher's Guide, it says that to be inclusive, certain words must go. For example, refer to partner rather than husband or wife. Now, I could spend a long time going through this guide, but... That would squeeze out the time I, I spent telling you about other things, like the organization Learning for a Sustainable Future. This is a group funded by teachers unions, teachers groups, ministries of education, some of the biggest corporations in the country, and the federal government. They have 10 different federal government departments listed as having funded them. They've received hundreds of thousands of dollars from the Harper government, likely millions over the years from various governments out there. And here's just some of the departments they've received Money from Canadian International Development Agency, Foreign Affairs, Environment Canada, Heritage Canada, Human Resources Development, Indian and Northern Affairs Canada, Industry Canada, Natural Resources Canada, Public Health Agency, and the Climate Change Action Fund. So what do they put out? What do they put forward? Well, they push things like the Canadian Youth Action Guide for Agenda 21. You know that UN-sponsored plan to use the environment to strip property rights away, the one that the left calls a conspiracy theory? Well, here it is. And they push a globalist agenda of international law superseding Canadian law. It's not the worst document to come from the organization, though. That, I would say, goes to this action guide that they've got posted on their website. It's a a youth guide to taking action against the Harper agenda and for the planet. Now, this thing is highly partisan. It's put together by people like Mike Kadima, a former NDP candidate, a Greenpeace activist, an author of the book, An Action a Day Keeps Global Capitalism Away. In fact, parts of the action guide were taken from that book, as well as Al Gore's movie, An Inconvenient Truth. It says the Harper government's positions aren't Canadian and therefore Conservatives in this country should be treated like Americans. It recommends on page 9, sing the American National Anthem when you hear a Conservative MP speak. Great stuff, huh? Then on page 12, it gives hints for redecorating your MP's offices with American flags and name signs calling them congressmen. See? Because they're not really Canadian. You get the idea. So let's add all of the stories we've brought you in the past but with these. Many of the great stories come from the blog Socialist Studies, a fantastic site that documents the craziness in the classroom. In addition to all this, we've had elementary school students in BC and downtown Toronto taken out to protest pipelines. We've had lessons in oral sex from middle schoolers, young kids taken to gay pride events, Che Guevara lessons in the schools, assignments to work with groups like No One Is Illegal, which 
says the Canadian state doesn't exist. This is part and parcel of why your kids can't learn math properly. Too much time is spent foisting this garbage on kids and on many of the good teachers that really do want to help kids learn. I've said it before, I'll say it again. If parents want to fix their kids' schools, they need to seize control back from the educrats. Adding more money to further more bad theories won't help. And that's the byline. We want to make sure that our math, our, our, our approaching to teaching math is a comprehensive, comprehensive approach. So we will be investing $4 million over the coming year to create new learning opportunities in math for teachers. The, yeah, the problems that teachers, it's not the way you're teaching the math. Richard Claxburn joins me now. He blogs at I on a Crazy Planet. He's a father who's been heavily involved in the Toronto District School Board in the past. Uh, Richard, you were one of the first people that brought to me the idea of social justice math. Um, they've got creative math as well, where you know, none of this is teaching basic arithmetic the way you and I learned it. No, uh, math scores are falling like a thermostat in a Toronto ice storm. So the provincial government in Ontario has decided it needs to take some sort of action immediately to remedy it, but they're not, the action isn't to teach kids math properly, it's to teach teachers, to send them back to school to learn how to teach this uh, nonsensical uh, discovery math is what it's known. I imagine it's called that because the graduates will have to learn how to, to they'll have to discover <laughs> how to function in life without having basic arithmetic skills. Yeah, the, and, and it, is, it is done. In a very different way, you can get to the same result in mm -hmm. doing basic arithmetic, but it takes you longer, it's more convoluted, it's more complex, there are more steps involved, and I think it confuses the students. Um, I, I want to play a, a clip because Ms. Sandals was pushed on this by reporters. This is something that is uniting people across the political spectrum. All kinds of parents are upset at what's going on, and reporters were asking about things like the cashier not being able to figure out how much change they owe you. But listen to Liz Sandals' response. These days, right, young adults, right, they don't, they don't know how to do that. They rely on the computer, right? The way cashiers actually do make change today is the cash register spits out the number that says give back this much, much money. What's more important is that that child actually demonstrated that they understood the numbers. Does that give you any hope? No, not at all. Uh, Liz Sandals, it's, it's sad to say she's not the sharpest tack in the box. You may remember that this is the same minister who, when asked about changes to the last curriculum, said she, she approved them without actually having read them. So, and that's an interesting point to bring up at this time because she was asked about the math curriculum and she said that the problem is not in the curriculum. And I'm wondering how she'd know that because she doesn't read the curriculum. That's true. Okay, so that brings us to another clip that we have of Minister Sandals. And she was asked about the fact that parents like you and I can't understand it. Roll clip. I think we really do need to do a better job of saying to parents, this is what your child's learning. This is how they're learning, and this is what you can do to help support that. So, Richard, it's your fault as a parent. It's the, ki the kid's problem uh, and fault as the student. And I think she's also blaming teachers who probably don't understand this garbage either. It's, uh, it's a really terrible situation. What we've had over the course of a number of years now is a shift in the educational system to focus on things that aren't really relevant to education, but they are to ideology. And so, we, yes, we do have social justice in math. Uh, there's, we've discussed the Ontario Institute for, education, or for Studies in Education before. It is to education what Mordor is to Middle Earth. It's this toxic place that in, incubates these fanatical ideas and then tries to disseminate them through the school system. And you could say to me, that sounds uh, hyperbolic, over the top. After all, the place is the most highly recognized teachers' college in Canada. Yeah. Let me give you just a few very quick examples of what's going on in this place. Okay, good. Um, go quick. We, okay, we've got uh, the, the book that they use, it's required education. They help promote this throughout education systems all over North America. They were one of the first people to do this. Paulo Fieri's uh, The Pedagogy of the Oppressed. This is a book that 
Thierry was a Maoist, that's right, he was an acolyte of the most prolific mass murder in history. Uh, he's a Marxist, and the book actually is laudatory towards Vladimir Ilyich Lenin. Yeah, uh, he uh, wants... it, we, yeah, okay. He... We'll have to leave it there, okay. <laughs> and uh, we have talked about Freire in the past. It is sure. a, a frightening book, and, and Oise is a frightening place. Richard, thanks for coming in today. My pleasure.